Welcome everyone, Simon here from the Wells of Wall Street. Veracity here and an update VRA on the chart. So obviously a top, top project, one of our favorites here at Wells of Wall Street. An update since a few days ago, I've got my voice back. We're back into the swing of things. So let's go straight into this. Couple of updates, not massively updates, but um, we'll just talk about a couple of things before we jump into the chart. So uh, just picking up off a few social media activities, so Veracity has finally been added to Yahoo Finance, of course, adding to the awareness aspect and people um, who are perhaps into like stock markets and things like that. And, and I know a lot of people use Yahoo Finance as a, a source of reference, uh, looking at a, a few sort of chart details here and there. But I think it's great to see more and more crypto assets added to what I would argue like traditional kind of finance uh, browsers and finance sites so really good and congratulations of course to Veracity for you know pinching that kind of thing as we move forward and adoption continues for this great space that we are in and then finally uh, Johnny Murphy 83 on Twitter has kindly posted this so analysis for the top one I think it's like 10,000 tokens or something but it's hit the top 10 hot tokens uh, Veracity sitting there just in ninth and um, so really good to see um, an interesting average here compared to some other ones uh, link is one of the ones that I've had previously I haven't uh, dipped into personally um, for a while now uh, Shiba Inu of course uh, does that need any more introduction than it's already had over the last however long the last few months and I'm not I'm not a bit confused about these two because they're not uh, well they are tokens to an extent but they're stable coins it's kind of a bit of a boring entry to the top 10 in my opinion but this is potentially showing um, obviously people getting ready to buy tokens or arguably transferring across to them from tokens perhaps um, you know selling to make profit and hold them for a bit uh, so interesting movements on this chart of course there's multitude of different ones out there but this is in particular one around whale stats um, so I just thought I'd throw that in there uh, this is quite interesting and interesting average purchase amount as well $250 for Veracity I think that's quite good um, but of course uh, yeah, I know there's a lot of bullish people out there about Veracity let us know in the comments below what price you entered in Veracity I think we covered that in a few videos as well it's really interesting to see where people jumped in and what are your plans? I've got a price prediction of around 21 cents. Some people are telling me that's absolutely ludicrous. It's going to be much higher than that. Let us know what you think it will be by the end of the year. And on that note, guys, let's jump into the chart for a quick chart review. So smash that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you have not done so already. And if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. Hopefully you're enjoying it. And we continue to full speed ahead with all of you guys. So let's go into the chart. <clears throat> So last two, three days have been quite interesting. Uh, what have we got observation wise? Well, in my opinion, this is showing um, consistent strength for Veracity. Of course, we had the dip down after the Bitcoin leveraging issue. Um, it wasn't as big a correction as I thought it'd be, so that's good. Um, but the quick retracement the next day, pretty much bang on to where we've been. It's almost like that day of the 27th of October didn't happen. Um, so our kind of previous point stands in the sense that we're still trying to attack this previous all-time high area of eight and a half cents roughly uh, today we hit a high so far by the way so far of 8.43 so not as high as the previous all-time high 0 0.0851 so a bit of a moment to go however um, we still anticipate that we will have the close once again over the seven and a half cents touch wood um, of course, the wick is showing quite a big uh, stick there at the end, so it's it's going to be a bit touch and go, in my opinion, but uh, let's hold that ground, guys. Um, and if we do, especially around this 7.7 .7 cent mark, um, that's really enticing us over the weekend to potentially start building this up even more. Um, obviously, the pullback has been an opportunity for people to be shaken out or take profits because uh, you know I didn't take um, a massive amount out uh, at this top level here I took a small amount out because I've I've got more of an interest around this area if you remember in the previous video we mentioned around me set, setting limit orders at uh, 9.2 cents and 9.7 just to capture uh, us going drifting over that 9 cents eventually and obviously just before 10 cents before probably a barrage of resistance at the 10 cent mark um, but if we do get past this uh, kind of area here at all-time high 
Of course, the next kind of psychological number would be 10 cents. But in the fib retracement levels, it's suggesting both on a macro and a, and a um, long term level that we should be anticipating potentially around 11 cents to around 11.7 cents. So if the drive comes in, and it is possible because we've seen a multitude of times, if you look here, I mean, obviously we've got big drives up um, over a period of a few days. But in general, in a day or two's period, we can quite easily jump those kind of numbers. Um, you look here, for example, on the 8th of October, a low of 4.3 and finishing at 5.7. Well, if we're talking about that, that arguably takes us to the 10 and, and slowly pushes towards that 11 cents. So really excited to see over the next few days how this pans out. The important critical aspect is maintaining this 7.6, 7.7 cent mark. If we can do that, I think the momentum will continue into this um, this asset. But there's always an opportunity um, to potentially grab some on a potential correction aspect. I've still got a, uh, a bag of USDT sitting down here at around um, 6.7 cents, I think it is. Um, so I have to see that. Um, I think I just slightly missed one yesterday, but I've got a lower region as well in the lower spectrum of 6 cents. I don't anticipate that to happen because I do think we've got great momentum into November following through to December to really drive this to massive numbers. Uh, when I say massive, I'm not talking about dollars or anything. I'm talking about in the grand scheme of things, how far this project has come. And to reiterate that on the right-hand side here, 15,000% up on one year, 17,200 year to date. 28% up on the week, 189% up on the month, 564 up on three months. Guys, this is gigantic. We're still in a bullish momentum on the MACD here in this midsection. Hopefully, you can just about see that. The histogram is having a bit of a wobbly, but I think we're going to still maintain that. The RSI um, got as high recently as around that sort of 75, 78. It's quite top heavy, but it doesn't look like we're pushing ourselves down to the average of around like 50, 60 mark. We're floating currently around 66. So this is hopefully stabilizing and pushing us up. Let us know what you think is going on. Um, in in the comments below, but I, I have a, a belief that over the next couple of days we might see some an, some new all time highs potentially. So it, certainly in towards next week, but we'll monitor that, guys. We'll do an update over Sunday or Monday, or if anything critical happens in the meantime. Um, but let us know, like I said, what price point you got into VRA. How excited are you about this project? Uh, it was quite funny actually. Go and check out their Twitter. Um, I think it's Mark, is it? Who's like one of the key founders of Rasty. He always goes off on one every now and then, but he's having an absolute go at someone who was mentioning about Adobe have this like update or something around um, you know security and fraud and stuff. Uh, but he absolutely rips this person apart, uh, suggesting that um, well, uh, Adobe are actually just kind of uh, pushing themselves even more into like potential opportunities for fraud, not through them directly, obviously, but people that potentially use it and use that mechanism of uh, what they use Adobe for, you know, like Photoshop and things and manipulation of images and potential stuff like that. But just go and, go and have a look. In fact, I wonder if I could um, uh, see if I could shove it here on the screen for you just to wrap this video up because I thought it was quite funny as I was reading it. Um, so here it is. Uh, Mark... <laughs> Yeah, so this person's put NFT fraud is a big problem. Now Adobe has launched uh, new tools uh, to help artists and protect collectors. Um, so that's quite interesting. But yes, NFT fraud is big. But Adobe, you know, like big question mark kind of thing. Remember Jobs, Apple deleted Adobe because of security. Adobe solution, embed metadata in the image. Wow. Then use Adobe Editor to hack it. So buy Adobe products to create a bigger fraud problem in the hack. POV point of view is the real deal so just emphasizing that veracity is on another level um, and i truly believe that truly influential in the years to come for sure there's a lot more to go in the years to come uh, but certainly in the short term there is definitely gains to be had guys we're gonna wrap that up there thank you so much for watching we'll see you in the next veracity update let's go